All right. Uh, so welcome, everybody. Um, we're here with Kellyanne Allen, um, who is a welder. And um, Kellyanne, I, I know at the end of your title, it's RSE. Um, could you yeah. tell us what, what does RSE mean? <laughs> it's, a, it's a fancy way of saying journeyman. Uh, it's red seal endorsed, so a lot of uh, project managers or whatever else will throw the RSE on just to kind of, as you evolve in your career, just kind of put that at the end to kind of um, say that, you know, you have the field experience and you've got your, your red seal or journeyman. Perfect. So that's okay. what it means. It's red seal endorsed. Oh, oh, red seal. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so can you tell us um, about your, just about your current profession? Um, what do you do as a, as a welder? Yeah, so uh, in the welding world currently, uh, I'm part, I work at a test facility. So we test welders that uh, do regulated work. So we test them for structural uh, qualification tests. Um, you might have heard them as bend tests or job tests for welders. Uh, there's a couple different ways. We do the destructive testing. So we cut coupons apart and we bend them up and see if they'll break pretty much. Yeah, uh, I also do inspections on piping. So pressure vessels and, and pipeline welding and uh, pressure piping welding. But uh, today we're at the test center, so. And that's what we're seeing behind you, correct? Is your test yeah, center? Yeah, yeah, this is part of the test center. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so could you um, just give us an idea, um, you know, as a welder, what um, would some of the, the general duties associated with that profession look like if you're a, a welder? Yeah, so welders, uh, the general duties for welders would be to, uh, you know, be involved in the, the morning safety meeting because welding is a pretty, can be a um, high risk um, type of profession around molten metals, sparks, um, sharp edges, hot work, all that kind of stuff. Sometimes working at heights or in confined spaces. So that's an important part of you know, the job description, being aware of the safety requirements, um, working with, uh, you know, um, it, fixing things, building fabrication and building stairs. You could build boats, uh, working on pressure vessels, working on pipelines. Uh, there's it's a wide range of stuff that you can do in the welding world for sure. Yeah. Can you tell us um, what does your typical workplace look like? I would imagine it can be pretty varied. I mean, from where you are right now oh, to actually being out in the field. Absolutely. Right? Like, um, yeah, here, I'll just show you guys since I'm at the shop. Can I switch this around here? There we go. So this is the test center. Wow. This is what uh, the test shop looks like. Now this is kind of what a fab shop might look like. You'll have your, your grinding station. This is a machine that gets used mostly for uh, gas, tungsten, metal arc. There's some controlled electrodes that have to be in an oven and, you know, stored at a certain temperature. So, you know, after high school, you don't escape the homework. You still have homework to do. Um, <laughs> there's, uh, this is a test booth. So, you know, if you're in a shop, you probably have a welding machine and some gear and stuff like that. Um, I guess another way to look at uh, what welding job might look like it's just like this you'd be working outside ideally not in the snow <laughs> yeah uh welders work outside they work in shops uh ideally with some sort of ventilation or you know a bit of open space for breathing and stuff like that uh they can work anywhere from inside of a vessel inside of a man basket um on roller coasters on uh we have a uh, a friend that He's a, a RADA, so a rope access technician, and he's worked on like uh, stadiums in Vegas and stuff like that. It's pretty cool where welding can take you. Wow. Wow. That sounds really interesting. Can you give a few examples of what a day or a week on the job would look like for you? Uh, well, for this one, we plan our tests. Uh, the candidates come in and uh, we prep the coupons. So... We get a list of uh, a candidates that come in and then we pick, um, well, first we get the materials in. Uh, here, I'll show you guys again, since I'm here and I love show and tell. <laughs> oh, here we go. So we pick, depending on the type of test, we pick a set of coupons. We stamp it up, we set it all up for all the, the welders. They'll weld it up. These are some of the uglier ones, but this is to kind of give you an idea. Uh, 
Oh, this is not so bad. So they walled it up. Mm -hmm. and this is some of the finished stuff here. And then we bend them. So these welds all pass. You see how nice it is? Yeah. Now, sometimes here we break them as well. So these ones have been zipped apart and, and we break them and we look at the indications in them. Uh, here at the test facility, we also build weld procedures. So this stuff here, we're just in the middle of this project actually. So it kind of really worked out for today. These are tensils. So this is some plate that we put in a machine and we pull this apart until it breaks. And then we write down the data for the material strengths and stuff. So it's kind of neat how it takes a little bit of uh, the stuff you learn in school, like the science stuff, a little bit of math, a little bit of metallurgy, chemistry stuff, and it kind of brings it all back home when you run away from it. It's like going into a trade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. There's a science connection there. Wow. It's almost like a, a lab. Well, it is a lab, yeah. a different kind of lab. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a kind of a trade lab. So we do up reports too. So that's included in our day here. Uh, we do reports and then we write certificates and we certify them. Uh, so we have to have a, a, like a certain level of certification to sign these papers off and then we provide them to the welders and then they can work within that, you know, scope of work, whatever they qualify to there. Hmm. Yeah. Um, but a typical day for uh, a welder that would have qualified a week, you know, they go to the job, they do the safety meeting, they get some drawings that kind of have, you know, uh, an, uh, measurements or sizes of what they need to build. Uh, they'll tack it all up and they'll weld it out and kind of get on to the next projects. And then kind of, if they did piping, they might be subject to uh, NDE. So uh, in the piping industry, uh, non-destructive examination. So there'll be a, uh, um, NDE techs or depending on the type, so radiography is pretty common up here. Uh, so they'll do, um, the, they call it shooting the welds, but they'll, uh, yeah, they'll shoot the welds and they'll look for the indications. So um, part of the inspection side is visual inspectors will look at the finished weld and then NDE will come behind them and they'll shoot the weld uh, with uh, radiography and they'll look inside the weld with the, uh, with the, I guess that it's gamma ray that they use for this. And they'll look for indications. So it could be little round indications, they call it a porosity from the gas pockets or slag from the coating of the electrodes, depending on the process that's used. Uh, so after that, if there's any repairs, they'll mark it out with the welder. The welders will have to stamp their ID on them and they'll have to fix them. You know, if they get too many repairs, they'll have to look for another job. <laughs> but it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's all part of the testing. So uh, welding, up here is pretty regulated. It's uh, subject to a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. And and Kellyanne, is that some just because the 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 like we I know that you're in oil and gas mostly, right? And is that because things are under such high pressure that they've got to just be uh, like perfect to to pass? Oh yeah. And there's even uh, different levels in that depending on the fluid service. So it's running through the pipe or running through the vessel. So, so or even where the level of service is um, in a pressure vessel. So like, let's use pipe again, for example, uh, in, in the oil and gas industry, there's sweet gas that doesn't have as much uh, H2S. Um, uh, the sour gas will have more hydrogen sulfides uh, and that'll make it uh, more susceptible to what they call hydrogen cracking because there's hydrogen in H2S and it makes the welds crack. So they'll use different electrodes and they'll make it more strict to pass the NDE than it will for, you know, the non-sour service and um, stuff like that. Also, clients could have uh, additional uh, specifications over one other client. So, like Enbridge, they have really high standards. Um, I do a lot of work with them. Um, we do those nick breaks. Uh, we do bends, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty neat stuff. Uh, pretty tough on the welder, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really high quality, like that's pretty much, you know, high echelon welding up there. It's, uh, it's really amazing, like the, the amount of, you know, like you said, like technical math and science, just in, in the language that you use um, uh, in, in, in this profession, like it's, 
it's not it's not what I think you stereotypically see with a, a welder that might be like on TV or something. It it seems a lot more technical. Oh that. yeah, for sure. Um, actually, welders in Canada have very high standards. Oh, for sure. Welding cats very high. Like even before you get to weld the I, uh, those tens tension tests. So these these guys here um, with the pull aparts, like. Even just to be able to weld, you have to be able to prove it with this test. And this, the, the pressure that this pops up when you pull it has to meet a certain criteria. And it has to be certified by individual. You gotta write up what they call a well procedure specification. That's like a recipe on how this weld is gonna happen before it even gets to the welder themselves. Um, and then at that point, you know, then the welder has to test to it to be able to weld. Um, on the project. Yeah. Wow, yeah, it's a real art and a science. Like, you know, it's a real craft. It's, a, it's quite something. It brings both worlds together. Something I never really thought of. I don't know a lot yeah. about welding. So it's very bit, it's been really interesting listening. Yeah, there's a, like, even for the welders, there's so much variety. It's really cool. Even on the inspection side, like the repairs, um, maintenance welders, they see a, a lot of neat stuff, um, like different repair techniques, um, see the service of the weld and um, uh, there's, uh, depending on the type of material, uh, they call it bake out. So you bake out this, um, uh, you bake out the impurities that have um, the industry term have impregnated into the steel, you bake them out so that it makes the weld easier. Um, there's also, you know, a lot of like some physics stuff too, like magnetism is a thing <laughs> for welding. Uh, that you get stray arc. Uh, the weld doesn't want to stick to the metal because it's magnetizing it. You know, it's a, a whole bunch of different stuff. It's pretty neat. Awesome. So um, I know, I hope students that are listening to this are going to, uh, you know, keep that <laughs> in mind, especially like in course selection um, to take that, you know, that physics class or uh, that chemistry class, because it sounds like it's going to be a, a big, you know, a lot of help to them. Um, oh, absolutely. Uh, chemistry, physics, you know, metallurgy, all of that stuff, it all ties in, even math, accounting. <laughs> right on. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, so Kellyanne, could you uh, tell us something that maybe you, uh, you really like about your job? And then uh, something, we, we hate saying, you know, that you don't like, but maybe that someone that's considering welding might not know or needs to consider before they um, become a welder. Yeah, um, for sure. Welding can be really tough. Lots of things are heavy, things are hot. You really have to be aware of your safety. Like, um, like you guys can see this here, the scar. I got that when I was uh, just starting welding. Uh, grinder kicked back in my face. You know, I went through all of the layers of skin, three la three layers of stitches. Um, you know, it's just serious. Uh, there can be some serious consequences. Uh, if you don't keep safety in mind um, in, in this type of industry, for sure. Um, uh, another, another thing, I mean, we kind of went over this already, but, um, you know, you work outside. That's cold out there. You can't tell. It's Fort St. John, not married, but you know, it, gets, uh, it, get, it gets really cold sometimes. And and you know, steel is warm and your hands are cold and your boots are cold and your toes are cold. Um, but it is a rewarding job. Um, at the end of the day, you're very tired, but you feel like you've accomplished something for sure. Um, a good thing, you meet a lot of people, a lot of different people. You work with a lot of different trades and professions, like from project managers to engineers, safety professionals, non-destructive um, technicians and e-techs, you know, destructive labs like where we are here, um, coders even, you know, there's um, industrial painters and, and coders are, um, they're another professional on its own. Uh, they also have to be qualified as well. And inspections, you know, there's different disciplines to inspections and stuff like that. Um, that's definitely part of it. You get to go to a lot of different places because the Holy man, it's cold in here. Um, <laughs> you're in a lot of different places because you're welding on different projects. Uh, or you could end up in a shop and, and weld the same thing every day, I guess. I mean, the options are open for welding. It's a very versatile uh, career. Awesome. 
Um, do you have any um, really memorable experiences or, you know, just uh, like a really good, uh, a good story or something that stuck with you along the way? Oh, uh, good story. Normally I just talk about my scar. Like that was a pretty good one, but um, good story that kind of stuck with me on the long way. Uh, not really. Um, nothing like, I don't know, you get to see some pretty amazing stuff. Like I guess as in a, um, an economizer, it's a type of um, processing tower in a, in a process, a gas processing plant. And it's up like four levels up in, in a scaffolding. And they have these tubes with all these little fins all stacked up. And I had my helmet with the light and I'm looking in here and I'm like, this looks exactly like a horror movie. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like this tick 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 and I'm like this would be a great place for a horror movie but I end up in some pretty interesting spots like that's uh like even um on pipeline jobs you can see like up here the northern lights are beautiful you start work really early you just go out and see them and the sky is just open and it's the color of cotton candy it's so nice um some of the places you get to go out on these projects are just amazing and it just shows you how beautiful BC is you know up, up north here yeah some of the lakes around projects and stuff that they kind of really stick with you awesome wow can you uh, tell us about your your pathway that you took to becoming a welder like educationally and was it something that you always thought you wanted to do or did you sort of figure that, that out as you went uh, uh so in grade 12, I needed um, an art or applied skill to graduate because I kind of had my heart set on like doing the pharmacist uh, thing. Um, <laughs> and it came down to um, web design or welding. And uh, I was like, hmm, I grew up in branch. I'd probably like welding, that'd be cool. I kind of wish I did the web design thing. It probably, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I went into welding in grade 12. I had a, a great instructor at the MSS there, Mr. Hassel. I don't think he's around there anymore, but he was very, he left a really good impression on me. He was great, super fun teacher. I loved welding. I loved staring at the puddle. Um, I loved being able to put stuff together and use the tools. Um, so that kind of really started me off with that. And then I got the, uh, I was fortunate enough to do the rotary exchange to Peru for 11 months there, uh, right after I graduated. And, you know, my parents said, you know, if you want to do, if you don't want to be a welder, you don't have to, you get a whole year to think about it. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, sounds good. And, you know, when I got back, they're like, so do you know what you want to do? And I'm like, oh, I want to be a welder. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, then I, and then I ended up doing it. And now here we are, um, ended up in Fort St. John because my stepsister was up here and uh, she was working in the oil and gas and it was a really busy time at that time and I just kind of stumbled into it and uh, I did some work around mayor and stuff at mills and auto mechanics and and that um with uh with the McDonald's there at uh what was it called Highland Valley Pellet that was a super fun job I got to help take apart the old box sorting pants and uh part of the construction crew that got to put the new one together it was uh it was a really cool time um mm -hmm. you know they just gave a kid a torch and said cut it all up it was so much fun <laughs> awesome uh the mayor was super good for that to get the different variety of jobs and then yeah i came up here because my stepsister was up here to do some pipeline jobs and and i just kind of never left after that Wow. And so did you, where did you do your training to become a welder? Was that at TRU? Yeah, that was at TRU in Kamloops there. They have a great, they were a great facility, a great school to go to. I really liked it. Awesome. Yeah. Um, let's see, where are we here? Um, where do you see the profession of welding heading in the future with all, all the things that are going on, like oil and gas obviously is a big, big field, always welders are in demand but um anything oh, else you can share with us um yeah so um as being part of the uh oh my phone's gone but that's okay um being part of the test center here uh we're recognized by technical safety bc we're a recognized testing agency with the bc boiler branch or technical safety bc and um 
in December of, of this past year, in December 2020, they uh, introduced a new Class A welder program uh, that affects you know, all, the, all the existing welders, um, a new qualification system that um, blends well with the Alberta uh, pressure um, pressure welder qualification system as well. So we're, we're, the industry is looking to harmonize a little bit better with the other provinces that are neighboring uh, to them, which is really good. So we're seeing that happen in the industry. And uh, TSBC or Technical Safety BC, they've introduced uh, kind of like <clears throat> we talked about a little earlier, not on, on record or whatever, but um, the IT class ticket that they're introducing to the uh, um, after the level one foundations, uh, the eligibility to take the IT exam there. And it's those three plates and the three positions um, that they've never had this in the industry before. So it gives the apprentices the ability to I would say fill and cap the weld. So the weld, uh, the first pass in the weld is the root pass. Um, let me just grab some stuff. Pipe weld, it's a part, the first pass that goes in there is the root. And then the second pass that goes in there is the hot pass. So the first pass doesn't have metal backing. You can see that there's nothing in between there behind that root. Um, then there's a fill, well, sorry, hot pass, fill and a cap. Now this isn't for test, we marked this red, this didn't pass, but just to show you this top weld, this is a cap here. You can see behind me that there's a root in there. So this new test for is to help apprentices be eligible to do pressure welding, but not do that root pass. So they have to weld against base metal. So that's those fill and cap passes. Um, and that's never happened in the industry before. So that's really exciting that BC, Technical Safety BC is introducing this. So apprentices have a, a, a bigger advantage of breaking into the piping industry than they did before. Because uh, this test, which is on a plate, this plate here, it's three positions. So we have the horizontal, vertical, and overhead on this half inch thick plate here. This, uh, the successful candidate will be eligible to test two company procedures on pressure, uh, on pressure equipment. So that's pretty cool. Wow. And yeah. um, Kellyanne, that just, uh, like you said, I guess th that just opens up, um, or I guess streamlines a welder's path to the oil and gas industry. Is that right? Uh, absolutely. To the pressure piping industry. Yep, for sure. Oil and gas. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. And they would have to, like in, in the past, um, that it was, I guess, was it a longer road to, to get there then? Oh, for sure. Yeah. So uh, initially there were the, the three levels. So the C level would be equivalent for, to the foundations level one and two. And then the B level would be equivalent to the level three. Uh, which is kind of the gateway to get your, your B ticket or your, your pressure certification. And then there's the A level, which is the level, uh, the A ticket, which would be equivalent to now the level four, which is the special metals, um, uh, the special metals ticket. So that's your more stainless um, and uh, non-carbon type alloy uh, base metal ticket. Uh, a lot of welders up here that weld mostly carbon steel that they would have up to their B tickets and their red seal, um, which would be equivalent to the level three. So once you get to the, so there's the level one, two, it's kind of like the break in, you can do the structural and then there's the level B or the level three there. So after you finish that training, then you can get the pressure ticket. And that pressure ticket is the one with the open route where you do the, well, the open route fill cap but now they've introduced that step uh, below it after the level one, two, where you can not do the root, but you do it with backing. So um, the, the test would probably 
Yeah. This, this plate test, which would let you do a pipe test um, to get in, to get more, uh, um, more hours on the tools and welding. Um, so you're not, you got more experience before you break in and you get a chance to kind of see what it's all about. Um, whereas otherwise, you know, at your level two, uh, level one, two, um, you're mostly a welder's helper. So you're passing the grinder, you're passing the rods. Um, it hasn't really been quite adopted since it's been a pretty recent um, progression for the industry or introduction, um, you know, into the industry up here. But the potential for it is really exciting. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds sounds great and i know that um and we, we were talking about this before we were recording and um nbit is offering that welding foundation just right in merit um where students would get that like first and second level and so um, like you're mentioning that next option for them could be to do the it that kind of absolutely testing. if they get the option to if they're considering welding they should get it anyway um the ticket's good for two years it's a it stands for oh uh oh Jen, maybe um, just while we let Kellyanne get get back on here, um, uh, could, maybe you could mention just a bit more about the welding program. Sure. Well, right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah, NBIT is planning to offer, offer the Welding Foundations program starting in July 2021. And it will end just before Christmas um, in December. So it's about six months. And that will give you your foundational ticket for welding. And um, we're accepting applications right now. Um, it is pretty competitive. We have quite a few on file right now and there's 14 seats available. So if you're at all interested, make sure you get your application in as soon as possible. Um, that can be done online uh, through the Ed Planner BC site that many of you are aware of. Uh, if you need a hand, I can help you or Mr. Anderson can give you a hand as well. Perfect. Awesome. I'm just going to pause us here and then we'll uh, we'll pick it up with Kellyanne in just a sec, hopefully. Okay, we're we're back uh, live here with with Kellyanne. Go ahead, Kellyanne. Hey there. Yeah. So the IT uh, stands for um, interim interim certification. So it's good for two years. Uh, once the can so the candidates only eligible for a certain time period. So the perfect timing to take this exam is after that level one, two foundation course, as soon as they're eligible to, because if they take the level after that, uh, they'll no longer be eligible to take this uh, exam from our understanding anyway. Okay. So um, it's really pretty cool that, you know, NVIT is starting to introduce this course and kind of get the students onto the, the next progression if they did want to take that career path. Mm -hmm. Sure. Awesome. Um, so Kellyanne, um, I'm just, I, I know you kind of mentioned this uh, already, but I was hoping we could circle back to just to speak um, about some of the other career options that there are for, for someone with a ticket in welding. Yeah. So other career options, uh, inspections is, a, is a, another career option that a lot of welders go into inspections. They go into project supervision and project management. Uh, welding is uh, like, it's very foundational, like getting your red seal. Once you get it, it doesn't go away. You have to keep that for life, it's yours. I mean, it's, it's a pretty neat thing. Um, also, uh, yeah, you could go into inspections. You could go into quality control. That's another oil and gas profession that's, uh, um, it deals with welding specs and turnover packages. Um, material uh, traceability documents, calibration stuff. It gets a little more onto the technical side of things. If you tend to lean towards the book, you're also like a, you like working with your hands, but you're a little bit of a book kind of um, 
book person. If you're not, I mean, you can still, you can stay welding and supervising stuff like that. Um, welders also make good, you know, safety reps because they've been on the tools and they have that field experience. It's really a good solid gateway to um, any, any of that interim project stuff outside of welding because you're on the project, you're working with your hands, you see how things are going on the ground level. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and what about some of the other professions? Again, I know, I know we, we talked oh, about Oh, for this, sure. Yeah. Yeah, but... definitely. So uh, going back to the piping and the oil and gas industry type thing, if we're kind of going, uh, circling around back to that one, uh, they're NDE techs, so non-destructive examination technicians. Uh, they do radiography. They shoot the welds with gamma rays and they take a look at what's inside of it. Uh, they also can do ultrasonics, uh, do a UT like they do it at the hospital, but they do it on a pipe and they look inside a weld and they use sound to check that stuff out and find uh, defects or indications and do reports about stuff like that. Mag particle, they can also spray it and throw some they use this magnetic yoke and stick it on um, on the weld there and try and find uh, indications that way. You know, so that's kind of what an NDE tech does. Uh, heat, tra heat treatment technician. So they're involved in, in uh, heating post-weld heat treatment of, of welds there. So they wrap them up with ceramics and, and take the, the metal up to a certain temperature and hold it down. Uh, what other? There's power engineers. Uh, they work on the processing plants and um, they manage like the process fluids that are going through and they monitor the levels of how the plants are going. If you kind of like chemistry side, that's definitely something to get into. Um, and the pipeline side, there's even heavy duty mechanics, you know, that blends really well with welding. Um, in, in the mill side, there's mill writing that also blends really well with welding. Um, yeah, there's project managers, you know, that's a little more formal type. You kind of evolve into that type of a, a job position. There's also safety reps. Um, safety is a really big thing in the industry. Um, you know, there's lots of heavy duty equipment, there are equipment operators. Uh, there's definitely lots of associated uh, engineering. Engineering is another essential, like very involved position in the industry here too. Um, there's different disciplines like uh, structural or mechanical uh, mostly mechanical with the piping, but um, you get to, a lot of them, the engineers out here, they get to go out in the field and check things out and do repair plans and stuff like that, which is pretty neat as well. Yeah, so lots of associated uh, professions that work around welding. Awesome. Yeah. So Kellyanne, um, what would you say are some really good skills or interests someone would need to be successful as a welder? Uh, skills, definitely being mindful of what's happening around you. Um, like I bring this up often, the safety is a big thing, you know, you'll be welding on hot things. You don't want to put your hand on a hot piece of steel or something that's sharp or sparks around you or wearing earplugs or, uh, um, chemicals or fumes or welding on paint or something like that. So you want to be aware of your surroundings for sure. <laughs> Um, attention to detail. Some people are naturally uh, yeah. more skilled at welding because they take the time to kind of watch the puddle as it's welding or take the time to go up to the one side and hold a little bit on the other side to even it out or take a little bit more time on their fit up of the weld itself to make the process go smoother. A little bit of planning involved in there as well. Um, mm -hmm. Some housekeeping, you don't want to be tripping on your cables. Um, or working with uh, bad rods, stuff like that. Yeah, it's definitely an art, right? The way you're talking, like you have to be detail oriented and you have to be really aware of every single part of the process, what it sounds like. Oh, definitely. And just uh, also there's letting yourself do the work too, not getting in your own way mentally. So practicing is definitely a big thing. Being mm -hmm. able to come home uh, and, and just kind of let go and come back to it the next day. That's another big part of it as well. Yeah. Is there anything someone in high school could or should be doing right now to prepare themselves for a future in your field? Uh, I think it's, it's funny how the rest of the courses in high school really kind of tie into evolving in your career as you get older. You kind of think, I don't need chemistry or math or physics <laughs> or whatever. 
here. And then it just kind of comes circling. Like, oh, I remember that mole bridge, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like that, that'll come around. So, you know, kind of, oh, I mean, welding is welding. You know, it's a skill, it's a, it's a, a labor type of work. But um, if you do end up in expanding in the career, uh, the, the other types of courses that you take, they definitely tie themselves together. Or if you wonder, you know, why am I doing this well? There's definitely chemistry, metal, and physics that are, that are tied into it. Mm -hmm. Kellyanne, as a former uh, chemistry teacher myself, the fact that you mentioned the mole bridge uh, <laughs> made me really happy there. I, that was, <laughs> I, I like that that's still on your mind. Um, <laughs> Do you, um, do you have any, any suggestions for students that, you know, maybe are on the fence about welding, um, ways that they could explore the profession in more detail before making that decision um, and say starting a program? The, the foundations course would be a, a really good place to start for sure. I'd recommend it to anybody that's even thinking about it or on the fence because uh, like welding is, welding is awesome. Just straight up. <laughs> <laughs> You learn how to use power tools and you learn how to measure and do angles. You learn how to read drawings. Like really it, it does help you get a little bit of independence. You know, I've got a bunch of tools at home. I can measure something, cut it and install it, no problem. Uh, and, and I learned a lot of those skills from going to welding school. Like in the first years, you, you learn a lot of essential, what tools are and how to use them. Like even just the introductory course adds a lot of value. To, to your life, really. I mean, if you don't decide to follow through with it, if it's not for you, you still learn some skills in, in those first few years of the trade, for sure. Excellent. And and this was uh, just kind of my own in, uh, interest sake here. Um, even if someone decided, say, to pursue a different trade later on, um, mm -hmm. would you'd obviously then recommend like welding's a good place to start even uh, from there, hey? Yeah. Oh, any trade is kind of a good place to start. You know, a lot of trades people will start in one trade and go to another, start in welding, go into fitting, start in carpentry, go into scaffolding, um, start in welding, going on electrician or vice versa. The trades are, are, are pretty good crossover that way. You learn like measuring skills and, and blueprint reading, stuff like that. Awesome. Um, and just as we're, as we're wrapping up here, um, do you have any kind of final advice general for young people as they're considering possible career choices? Uh, yeah, well, uh, going to school, kind of like you mentioned earlier, I guess, going to school for a trade, is, uh, um, it gives you some life skills that you can kind of take with you outside of the job. If you don't end up sticking with them, you still have those skills that you learn. Um, you do, you know, it's, uh, well, I think it's a little bit of that. Uh, if you don't use it, you lose it. That's why it's so highly regulated and there's so much testing and it is so frequent because, you know, eyesight goes, um, it is kind of like riding a bike. If you don't do it after all, you know, you catch back on, but it is a little difficult to kind of get your bearings again. Um, but uh, I definitely, you know, recommend giving it a shot if you're considering it, if you're on the fence to doing something else, it's something that you can use as a stepping block to something else. Perfect. Um, okay. Well, that's um, the, the last question that, that we have for you, unless Jennifer, if you have anything else um, to add before we say goodnight. No, just thanks so much for opening my eyes because I really don't know much about welding, but it's certainly fascinating. I never really thought about all the different aspects before. Like I didn't, I don't know. I didn't really think about it as anything more than, you know, it's a trade, but it's so, mm. so related to science, you know? Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah, it's it's really cool. It's definitely eye opening as you're going through it, kind of how all the dots connect to themselves and how you really value that kind of stuff. And, and um, as you go through it, definitely, even in inspections, you learn it all again and again. It's uh, yeah. even with coding, you know, and the inspections really lean back onto the sciences and the traits. It's really cool. And your passion for it is very evident and it's, it's uh, contagious. It makes me think, oh, maybe I should try that. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I do really like it. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely, yeah. I'm really excited for, for our students to see this and, and just kind of get a glimpse into your world a little bit. Um, even just, you know, being able to show us tonight uh, your, your space and what's going on in there um, and kind of let us in a bit. We, we really appreciate it. So 
Um, yeah, yeah, thanks for inviting me, Mr. A. Really appreciate it. It's, uh, <laughs> it's nice to get to know you too, Jen. Uh, yeah. talk to you guys. Perfect. Nice to meet you. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Well, too. once again, Kelly Ann, thank you so much. And um, we'll say good night uh, until next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we've got a little, a little gift that we'll be sending up your way too oh, from okay. NVIT and MSF. <laughs> oh, cool. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's a surprise when, 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 when I got invited. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's